This is how you build a personal computer, right? With modern assembly line production. Wrong. You can also do it yourself. Get yourself a case, a motherboard, some memory, a disk drive, a graphics card, and you can get exactly the computer you want. Today, we'll show you how to build your own PC on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Cardinal Technologies, designer and manufacturer of advanced personal computer systems and communications peripherals, including multimedia and graphics products. Cardinal Technologies, where computer products are designed and manufactured in the USA, and by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh, and the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Schaffe, and with me this week is Andy Berg of the Santron Computer Company. Andy, it's a little hard to believe, but this is a personal computer. In fact, this is the new Chips and Technologies F8680 computer on a chip. It is a complete IBM PC XT clone with the CPU and the graphics card and the serial port and the accessory controllers and so on. All in this one little chip with 160 pins. In fact, it has everything, all the electronics that are in this old IBM PC XT. This is what it would look like if you actually had it in a palm top device. Uh, there's the computer, uh, memory chips and other little goodies you might add to it. This is the other end of the spectrum. I'm of course not going to build that computer by myself. But when we're talking about building your own PC, it is so cheap to go out and buy PC clones these days. Why would I want to build one myself? Why would I go to a home brewer like you? First of all, Stuart, there are two major advantages. Number one is flexibility. Isn't it more fun if you build your own system? Yeah, right. <laughs> you give us the system's configuration, we'll build it for you. Uh -huh. Second of all, you can request to see the brand name of the part. So if I want this particular kind of hard drive or this particular graphics card, you can do that for me? Exactly. Andy, today we'll take a look at several approaches to building your own PC, from doing it yourself, to hiring somebody to put it together for you, to rebuilding your PC with the new modular computers from Compaq and ALR. The starting point for the do-it-yourselfer is usually finding the right source for all the components you need, and one place to go looking is the Weekend Computer Mart. Good, let's make a deal. No reasonable offer refused. This is the Oakland Computer Show and Sale a regular traveling flea market for computer parts and other electronic goodies. And if you want to build your own PC, this is the place to visit. If someone doesn't know anything about computers, they can come to our computer show, they can go to our free seminar. After the seminar, they can walk around the show, pick out all the pieces and parts they need for the computer, take it back to the workshop. They can assemble it right at the show, after the workshop, and take home a brand new computer. So hackers come here not just to buy components, but also to get advice from seminar leaders like Clarence Hose. We don't just give them a screwdriver. We actually go through the hands-on aspects of building the machine and letting them know what's in there. The main benefits of shopping at a computer mart are a wide selection of products and very low prices. Their price wars at the shows, they a lot of times sell like 5% above their cost. They sell in volume. It's not like going to like a, a business land store or a computer land store where they have a high overhead and they expect, you know, 25 to 50 percent margin. I picked up a keyboard. I found a tape drive cheap, uh, controller card, memory. So, uh, you know, you have to be kind of a do-it-yourselfer, but, uh, and they sell package systems too, but to really get the deals, you know, you have to kind of shop around. Once these buyers get through their first do-it-yourself experience, it only gets easier and, in some cases, profitable. I've built two systems. Uh, right now, I'm working on a third. I've sold the system that I currently own and uh, got some money for it already, which I'm buying parts for my uh, upgrade. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. If you want to start from scratch to build your own PC, there are two ways to get help. Jonathan Chilvers is an instructor who can teach you how to build a computer, and Chuck Liu is a so-called home brewer who will build one for you. 
Jonathan, let me start with you. We've all probably gone to Radio Shack or Heathkit or something like that and built little radios or something in the past, but a computer is another story. You've got a lot of stuff in here. How difficult is it to really build a personal computer? Well, the good news is that uh, today, building a PC is very easy. Hmm. Practically anybody can do it. Okay, but w what's the hard part then? I mean, the hard part is really not assembling it, is making the choice of what the consumer wants. Right, right. Now, let, let me ask you, I don't see any soldering irons here or anything like that. I mean, what tools do you need to put the computer together? Well, the beauty of the, uh, of the PC is that I just need this one screwdriver and I can assemble the whole thing. You can make, do a computer with a screwdriver? A screwdriver, that's uh, all. <laughs> All right, now let's start from some of the decisions you talked about. I guess the first choice you have to make is, is the case. What are you going to put all this stuff in? Is that, in fact, a decision, or is there a sort of a standard PC box you put it in? No, there is a variety of different uh, cases, and there are tower cases, and mm -hmm. there are the uh, standard old AT case, which is a larger case, right. and this is called the mini case. And this is the case that I myself personally like the best. Okay, now this is an example of a computer which you put together yourself. You yes. Put all these now, give me a guided tour of the box and what all the different components are, what I have to worry about. Okay, the box comes uh, from the uh, store yeah. with the power so supply power is, already built, is built in. That's all. Okay. Uh, the next step is going to choose what kind of a CPU you're okay. going to use and the motherboard. And this is it right here. And this is a standard uh, 386 16 megahertz PC clone board. And this is now the Volkswagen uh -huh. of uh, PCs. And again, to install the motherboard, I mean, just snap it's it in there. Snaps right yeah. in, and just two screws holes in. Okay. How about all the rest of the stuff? Well, the um, uh, uh, the next choice is uh, uh, is the floppy the floppy disk okay. and your hard disk. Okay. Today, the prices of uh, PC components have gone down so low that everyone now really has to have a hard disk. Right. Okay, so here's your hard drive. So this is the hard drive, and in the front, I'll just turn this sure. around, uh, I've installed uh, two floppy disks. Right. Uh, the bottom one is a standard 360K, which mm -hmm. is the uh, industry standard five and a, five and a quarter inch, right. and the top is the 1.2 megabyte high density disk. And I also have, because uh, many people are using these smaller three and a half inch, this is a, a 1.44 three and a half inch uh, floppy disk. Now we're going to that slot? And this will go into this slot. Okay. Uh, uh, most uh, PCs do not have three floppy disk right. drive, even though I think it's a necessity today. Depending on what format the uh, what software format, is Because in, yeah. uh, uh, today all software is really distributed okay. in three and a half and, some, and, and also uh, the, the uh, a five and a quarter. Now, now you're sliding all that stuff in from the front, but I take it you've got to do something at the back to connect all this. Right. Stuff. Well, this is where the, the uh, sort of where the, uh, yeah. the screwdriver secures it, and uh, uh, and of course we have uh, cables to uh, connect it. I've already connected these bottom ones. Uh -huh. uh, so it's just uh, a question of plugging in the cable. Just plugging in the cable. Right, how, about the, how about the hard drive? Okay, this is a uh, 200 megabyte wow. hard disk drive, three uh -huh. and a half inch uh, of format, mm -hmm. and there's a little spot right here, and I'm just going to slide that in from the back. Slide that in from the back, uh -huh. and uh, I'm going to I'm going to secure it later. Uh, 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 the um, uh, next thing we have to uh, okay. So what are all the boards we have out here? Well. First is memory. Right. Uh, when uh, we have to decide how much memory we want on mm -hmm. the PC, and with the new operating system uh, uh, MS DOS 5.0, more mem memory the better. Yeah. This is called a SIP, mm -hmm. and this is one megabyte of RAM, and I've installed one already. So you just plug that in. Yes, just plug that in. I'm going to do that right now, and it just goes in. Yeah, so that's uh, a second megabyte. You're this is a right? second megabyte. Uh -huh. So this system has two megabytes. A RAM. Okay. What's all these other cards then? What else? Okay. Do you need? Uh, uh, I had to make a decision on what kind of a uh, video monitor I mm -hmm. wanted, and for the kind of work I do, a simple TTL, uh, a graphics card, is all I need. And this is what the graphics card looks right. looks like. And you just and slide the, it in the slot. I just huh? plug it right in, and it contains. Let me tell you, it contains a parallel right, port right. Uh, built right in, and that just goes right in. I kind of. Push it in with the uh, okay. back of my hand. And quickly, two more cards. What are, what are these? Okay, this is the uh, this is the hard disk host adapter as well as the floppy disk controller, and this also just goes right in, uh, pops right in, and I just wiggle it back and mm -hmm. back and forth, and uh, and then uh, this is really all I need to get my system going are these two cards, uh -huh. and I'm going to plug in the uh, floppy disk uh, a ribbon cable. All right. And then the uh, uh, ribbon cable for the hard disk. This just goes right in uh, here, very simply. Turn it on and pray. And turn it on and pray, <laughs> yes. And this goes in here, and essentially, you've built your own PC. We are assembled right now. 
All right, Chuck, let's turn to you. And if I'm a little intimidated, despite what Jonathan says about building it myself, I can go to a guy like you who's called a home brewer and tell you what I want and ask you to build it for me, right? Right. All right, now you've got an example in front of you of, of the kind of thing you would build. First of all, this is a different case from the one we looked at, isn't it? Yes. Could you show it to us? You can stand up and okay. just sort of stand it up if you want. Okay. Okay, so, so what kind of case is this? This is what we call a mini tower. Uh -huh. Okay, it's got two five and a quarter internal bays and three three and a half internal bays. What I have here is one 1 1.2 high density floppy drive and a 1.44 mm -hmm. three and a half inch drive. What I have also is a uh, 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 removable hard drive. A hard drive, yeah. Okay, you can simply slide it out wow. like so and take it home with you What's when you're done working. Of having that? Oh, this is for security reasons. If you don't want anybody to tamper with the system, you can simply you do so. Carry all your files right. with you. And if you have right. another machine at home, could you plug it into that machine? Yes, of course. Uh -huh. It's interchangeable. All right, so let's get back inside the box. What else is okay. in here? Okay. What I have here, uh, this is an internal power right. supply, and this is a VGA card mm -hmm. that we have here, and this is the uh, IDE controller, uh -huh. which controls floppy drive, hard drives, and uh, I/O input output devices. Okay, okay. Now, now this okay. is, is this an example of the motherboard right. you have inside that's the exact, there? That's the exact motherboard. Or do you put that, that down for a second if you want, and okay. just walk us through the motherboard okay. and show us what the components of that are. Okay, this is a 386SX25. Uh -huh. uh, it's made by uh, Advanced Micro Device, right. CPUs right here. This is a uh, math capacitor socket, mm -hmm. and this is a chipset. Uh, the memory modules go in here. Uh, it takes uh, SIM modules. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are the BIOS. It's got six 16-bit by a uh, uh, bus and a one seven, uh, eight bit slot. Yeah. Okay. Now let me ask you one. You can sit down again if you want, Chuck. I want to ask you a question. I see on the back of your box here you have the FCC sticker. Right. Now I know you, you always see one of those on the back of a computer. What, what does that mean? If I build my own computer, do I have to get the FCC to say it's okay in some definitely, way? Definitely, definitely. In what way? What's the problem? Okay. FCC is regulated by uh, Federal Communication right. Commission. Okay. Uh, it's comes in two classes, class A and class B. Class A is for industrial use, and class B is for home use. Okay, uh, what it does is uh, it regulates the uh, uh, f uh, radio frequency yeah, that it emits from come the, out, come of out the of the system, right? Okay, now Jonathan, I'm gonna go back to you. If I go to a home brewer like Chuck, he's gonna sort of take care of this FCC stuff. What happens if I build it myself? Is it illegal? Uh, for me? No, the uh, cases are certified, and on this particular model, the power supply actually has the certification right on it. So one should check uh, when you buy a case that it is certified. Okay, so you can buy the case with the power supply that already has the FCC certification on Correct. it. Correct. Uh -huh. Now, one last question, Chuck. You teach a course in which you show people how to do this. Uh, suppose somebody who's watching is interested, yeah, I'd like to build my own computer. Mm -hmm. Are there courses like this offered around the country? Yes. Uh, 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 I teach one in the Bay Area, but, but they're offered all over the country in the community college system. And, and apart from just having fun and mm -hmm. the satisfaction yes. of having put it together yourself, do you save money? I mean, how much did it cost you, for example, to build your own 386 PC like this? Uh, this one probably cost me, because I have a very expensive hard drive yeah. here, uh, around 1000 but the prices uh, are dropping monthly. And one can build a, a system for about $700. So you could save money also by doing save it yourself. Save money, and you can get exactly what yeah. you or want. Or by going to a home brewer. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Well, you probably already have at least one computer, so rather than wanting to build a computer, you may want to rebuild your computer and to upgrade it. One of the leading suppliers of upgrade motherboards and other add-ins is a company called Cardinal Technologies in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Lancaster is best known for its rich farmland and the Amish people who live here in total non-techy simplicity. But there's one company here that defies the stereotype, Cardinal Technologies, makers of PC systems, modems, graphic cards, multimedia boards, and motherboards. If you already have a PC, you don't necessarily have to build a new one just to get more speed and horsepower. You can rebuild the one you have. Buying and installing a replacement motherboard from a company like Cardinal is easier than you might think. It's just a matter of removing a few screws and uh, unplugging a few connectors uh, and uh, off you go. And, and it's a lot of fun then to reconfigure the motherboard into your system to bring it back up. It gives you a good feeling once you've accomplished this. You feel like you really know how to build a PC. Many users are afraid to dig deep inside the computer for fear they'll never get it back together and working again. But Harold Kroll says not to worry. I mean, most people are hesitant to even put in an adapter, let alone change the motherboard. But we believe that 
that there are users now sophisticated enough to try and change their motherboards and the benefits from, from doing that are tremendous. Uh, people can, for, uh, for four or five hundred dollars, get a motherboard that gives them state-of-the-art uh, technology, 386, uh, 486, and a lot of advanced uh, features uh, that they could not otherwise have without buying a very expensive PC. There are several advantages to rebuilding your PC with a replacement motherboard. You can not only get a faster CPU, but you can also free up some expansion slots thanks to the high level of integration on the newer generation motherboards. You get uh, onboard memory slots so that your memory is resident right on the motherboard instead of on a plug-in card, which saves you uh, slot space. The other thing is, is today's motherboards have a lot of peripherals connectivity, such as your serial and your parallel controllers are built right on the motherboard again allowing you to free up some slots so that you can put in other peripherals products. So if you're happy with your keyboard, your monitor and your disk drives, but the old CPU just won't handle Windows, get that screwdriver, buy a new motherboard and do it yourself. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. The latest trend in off-the-shelf personal computers are modular PCs that give you an easy way to rebuild and upgrade the various parts of your computer. Here to show us two of the new modular upgradable PCs are Ray Pollum of ALR and John Meany of Compaq. John, as we saw at the beginning of the show, and as we know, I mean, the, ten seems, the, the trend seems to be toward more integration, yet you've intentionally pulled the computer apart and broken it up into these modules. Why? We found that if you separated all the different pieces, you would give the end user an opportunity to use the machine for a longer period of time. So the guy who's worried about buying a PC today goes tomorrow, yet another better one's going to come out. Yeah, it includes processor, video, I.O., all the different components that are involved. So instead of replacing it. the computer, you can just replace the part that you think is better That's now. That's right. All right, let's look at ALR now. You guys started this, I guess, a couple of years ago, Ray, right? Yeah, I will give you an example of what John's talking yeah. about. This machine is the ALR PowerFlex. Uh -huh. Now, when we introduced this back in 1989, it was a very good 286-based product. Right. Uh, it comes standard with one megabyte of RAM. It has six expansion slots, a hard disk controller, a floppy disk controller. It currently retails for $795. Okay. But, but <laughs> <Right. laughs> it's a it's a 286-based sure. system. Yeah. If you wanted to run software which required a 386 mm -hmm. processor, in the old days you take the old system and chunk it and buy a new computer. Chunk it, buy a new computer. Okay. Now you don't have to do that. This computer was built with what we call just upgrade the CPU built mm -hmm. in. And you can take okay, a module. Yeah. This module is a 16 megahertz 386SX module. Uh -huh. It retails at $245. Mm. So you can buy this module, plug it into this machine, thereby retaining the original investment mm -hmm. of the 286 machine. And now you're able to run the latest All software. Right, so show me how complicated it would be to do. I, I've got my 286 ALR and I want to make it a 386. It's a very simple process. You take the module, you plug it into the feature slot, uh -huh. and then you turn on the machine. That's it. Okay, let me see. There's no dip switches. There's mm -hmm. no BIOS changes. And it says PowerFlex 386SX module installed. Hmm. And that was 240 how much for the card? $245 yeah. at the retail price. Okay, let's turn to this ALR machine now and tell me what we're doing here with modularity. This is ALR's mid-range product, and this product begins as a 33 megahertz 386 okay. ESA-based machine. Right. True 32-bit throughout, through the ESA expansion slots, through the memory, the cache, everything that goes into this machine is 32-bit. Okay. This is a 33 megahertz 386 on this module here. So I take it the scenario is I want to upgrade yet again to what, a 486 now? If for some reason you wanted to upgrade to a 486, either a SX 486, okay. a 2546, right. a 3346, or even a 50 megahertz 486. Okay. Let's say you start out with word processing right. and you're doing some business applications on the machine, but your business grows and maybe you need to get into desktop publishing. Okay. I'm going to show you how to upgrade this from a 33 megahertz 386 all the way to a 50 megahertz 486 high performance. All right, let's do it. This is currently a 4 MIPS machine. Right. What you would do is you would remove the Pull 386 the processor. Mm -hmm. Now you don't throw that away because ALR gives you a rebate on that machine okay. or on that processor card. You would take the 50 megahertz 486, mm -hmm. plug it into the processor slot. All right. Okay. In order to enhance the performance of this 50 megahertz 486, I'm going to install a 256K external cache controller. Okay. 
that's installed right next to the CPU card. Mm -hmm. and, and what do we have here? Memory? This machine is expandable up to 17 megabytes on a system board. But in some applications, 17 mega megabytes may not be enough. Right. We have an optional memory expansion card, which allows you to bring the machine all the way to 49 megabytes 49 overall. Mm -hmm. And that's simply a plug into that slot. And now you've and gone from a 33 yeah. 386 to a 50 megahertz 486, 256K cache, 49 yeah. megabytes of RAM. Okay. All right, John, let's turn to Compaq, and you've got a lot of press on your modular machines. Now, first of all, you have a tool. Ray, Ray didn't use a tool. What's that screwdriver do? Uh, the screwdriver is all you need to do to, to open it up and uh -huh. to remove or replace any of the components. All right, run us through all the components. What are the different okay. modules on the Compaq machine? Basically, there's five uh, components or, or modules involved in the system. The first one I'm going to pull out, just because it's most convenient, is the uh, memory module. Uh -huh. And uh, with this memory board, you can put up to 64 megabytes of RAM on the system. Mm -hmm. The next one is going to be the processor board. In this case, it's a uh, 486 SX 16 megahertz processor board. It's also got all of the um, standard memory, four megabytes of RAM, the logic to address the memory, and the cache built into okay. it. The uh, video board <coughs> is also a separate module, and you can expect that in 1992 we'll be providing uh, video upgrades for this system. Okay, and then over here on yeah, right. We have three pieces now. We got right. Four. Over here on this side of the machine, we took the I.O., that is the board that has the keyboard and mouse uh, right. ports, the parallel and the serial ports, all on it, Set, put it on a separate board, as well as the battery hmm. that runs the clock on the system and the system ROMs. System ROM upgrades would also be done on this board so that you would take this board out and do that. The uh -huh. other thing about this board is that either Compaq or possibly third parties We'll certainly be looking at this component to upgrade it in terms of either token ring or Ethernet right, down, right. maybe a SCSI port, and so on in the future. Okay. And then the fifth component is the system expansion board, which is the ESA slots. Yeah. And now that can be expanded or upgraded in the future as well. And that's what we talk about in terms of intelligent modularity. Okay, now, now again, what do you mean? What is you, you say intelligent modularity? What is the intelligent part? Well, instead of just looking at different pieces and pulling them apart mm -hmm. and putting them back together again, we looked at each one of those pieces and what were the different ways that we could upgrade those pieces. I think the I.O. board is the best example. Yeah. There are a lot of pieces on the I.O. board that can be changed in the future, either by Compaq mm -hmm. or by third parties. All right, now if I wanted to upgrade my Compaq machine now, <coughs> what do I do? I just sort of replace one of these well, boards? Well, let's, let's talk about the most common one that uh, Ray addressed yeah. earlier, and in this case, I'm going to upgrade to a 48633DX. Right. So you would get your 486 processor board, insert that in the system, and it's basically just the reverse of what I did to take it out, mm -hmm. and now you got a 4633. Yeah. By the way, we will also be providing higher uh, pro performance processors in the future uh, in this box. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you, Ray, I mean, it looks very easy to just stick these boards in, but you know, a lot of typical business users, I mean, they don't want to take the case off. They don't want to stick their fingers in this stuff. I mean, how, how much knowledge do you have to have to be able to do this? How, how dangerous is it? How, much, how many mistakes can you make here? It, it's not dangerous at all. Uh, ALR sells its product through a professional reseller community. And typically, large corporations, small corporations will have a reseller come in and do the upgrade for them. Uh -huh. It's very simple, as I showed you, to be able to do it yourself. But in selling through a reseller channel, they have the ability to call local support and local okay. service to, to perform those types of functions. John, would that be the same with the compact? You, oh, yeah. you literally don't have to open it up yourself and stick these no, boards I, in yourself. I agree. And in fact, I think that the trend is going, in, particularly in large businesses, away from internal do-it-yourself in your own business yeah. to relying on somebody else whose business it is to do that. And Ray made a good point there. So the idea here is not necessarily to do it yourself, but you really do have the ability to have at least somebody you know, open the thing up and change pieces of it and keep your computer current. Certainly. All right, and what are the costs of things like your upgrade, John? We saw what the, what the 3 to 6 board was. Suppose I want to go to that, that higher board. The way that we price that is that the cost for the upgrade is no more than the difference between the two models when you first buy uh -huh. it. In this case, you're talking about $1,200 at uh, retail. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Well, that's today's tutorial on how to build or rebuild your own PC. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, this is a special summer edition with a focus on software. 
Here are last week's best-selling software titles for the PC according to PC Connection. Microsoft came in number one and two with Windows and DOS upgrades. And rounding out the top ten are Superstore 2.04 and Software Marketing's Bodyworks 1.0. Next up, Paul Schindler in our Summer Software Review. If you're one of the Macintosh users who wonders if System 7 is worth the trouble of upgrading, I'm here to tell you it is, and I'm here to tell you why. Now first, notice that the files themselves have changed. They're all three-dimensional now. You can label them with colors that have specific meanings to you. You can maneuver around in the traditional way by double-clicking on a folder, but you can also move between applications using a menu of those currently operating. The meaning of the Apple menu has changed. It used to be where you put desktop accessories, but there are no more DAs in System 7. Everything's an application, and every application can reside right there under the Apple. Now, some people worry about software compatibility. Apple has some means of checking it and advises you to get upgrades where required, but everything I had ran under System 7 just fine. Your mileage may vary. There's another new idea in System 7, the alias. Suppose you want to launch Word. The actual application is in the Word folder. Now you can create an alias that acts just like another copy of the program, but is really just a 2K pointer to its location. You can put an alias in the Apple menu. Here's a handy feature if you're garbage collecting your hard disk. You can now sort folders by size, so you can concentrate your attention on the big ones. Apple Macintosh System 7 comes free on new Macintosh computers. Many older machines can upgrade and the price varies. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by Cardinal Technologies, makers of the Snap Plus video adapter. Snap Plus hardware and software turn a PC into a video production workstation. Snap Plus from Cardinal Technologies, made in the USA. And by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use. 